my name is Ben Hilliard with Daedalus Productions Inc. And today what we'd like to do is show you how to assemble one of our dice trays um, for one of our dice cases, whether that is for a Dice Master's um, case or for a Courier's case or whatever else you have that might require the assembly of one of our dice trays. Now, what I'll be using today is the same old blue tape, but also we've changed glues since I started making these videos, and we found that this Beacon 527, um, I found it at Hobby Lobby, but Beacon 527 seems to be quite a, a good, strong glue, and it also works quite nicely with the varnish. Um, we had to find something stronger when we were shipping our product assembled, due to the fact that many people were receiving our product uh, unassembled and we had we didn't like that so what we're, we're now using though is like I said Beacon 527 now what we have found to make it work a little bit better is we we take a little sandwich ziploc bag and you just take some of the glue and you squirt it just into the end so you're kind of making like an a cake icing bag but this will give you a lot more control very similar to the super glue we used to say you could use but this will give you a lot of control as you apply the glue to the insert so you just seal the bag up you then take a pair of scissors or a knife I'm going to use my knife since that's what I have handy here and you're just going to cut off the very tip of the bag here. You don't want to cut off too much or then you'll just start applying more glue than you need to. Okay, so for our Dice Master case or Courier's case, depending on which one you purchased again, you're going to want to start with the lid. Now the lid requires these six pieces first thing you want to do is identify the side that you like the best. I like this side the best, so we're going to make that the top. So I'm going to flip it over and set it down. I'm then going to take this piece that has these three tabs on the bottom. I'm going to apply a little bit of glue just on the base of this piece. You can see how using this bag really does help a lot. Just puts a nice little bead of glue out. I'll then take it and place it right in its three slots right down the center of this top plate. You'll then see that these pieces sit nicely just like so. Okay. What you'll do is then you'll just glue these on. Now you can either pick up the plate and glue the inside of the plate on the inside edge there or the outside of these. I'm going to glue the outside of these pieces. Okay, I'm going to just glue right down the line here, right in between them. So I'm not gluing on the base of this, but just in between the two the holes. And then all the way to the edge plus the little tab on the end. And I'm going to do that to all four of these outside pieces. I'm also going to put a slight dot at the top of that middle hole, plus on each of these end tabs as well. Now if you're using this Beacon 527 glue, you have to move quickly, because it does dry fairly quickly, and you don't want it to glue or dry on you, for obvious reasons. Once again, just at the top of that middle hole there. Okay, so that is all ready. So now I'm just going to take it and put it all together. I'll start with my edges. Making those are nice and snug. Just be careful as you grab these pieces. Also, I found it helps because there is a little bit of pry pressure um, due to the design, but it helps to put in one side, one edge piece or of this this plate. Start here and move your way that way. Um, 
it helps with just making sure that it all lines nicely. So just like this. In, make sure the center post lines up, and then straight across. Smoothing out any excess glue. If you want, you can take a Q-tip and run it along those sides. I'm not going to worry about it too much, only because that is the inside of the lid. So nobody was going to be seeing that anyway. But that is your choice. I'll then take the, the tape here. I'm just going to need four small pieces. And I'm going to, again, tape the corners here. I found that if I put my thumb, put a piece on, put my thumb on top of that piece, pull just a little bit, not a ton. If you pull too much, you'll, you'll break the tape because it is weak tape. Intentionally, it's supposed to be weak. But that will then make sure that your joints are nice and tight. You'll also notice that I am making sure that the tape, all the excess tape, the overhang, is headed towards the top of the case. You see, look at that, I pulled it too tight and broke it. But what we want to do is make sure that all the excess tape is, because we're going to actually assemble our dice trays and tape them right to the lid to help us make sure all the trays are aligned properly. And there you have it. And you'll just set that to the side. Now, the key, as you're taking an assembly, you know, you're going to get this massive pile of different pieces. Now, in here you've got well, three, four, five, six different types of pieces in this huge stack. You're going to have these. These are the center posts of the dice tray. You'll then have these pieces. These are the sides. You will then also have these pieces as well, which are the end caps to your dice trays. Your other three pieces are this piece, which is a B piece. You can look on the ends to identify it as a B because of the little letter we've etched into here. But you also then can look and see this center notch here is kind of a short and stubby notch. Just goes straight down almost midpoint of that of that slat. Here to your left is an A piece. It can be um, identified by the little A etched into it here or by the fact that it has a little bit deeper notch. So you can kind of see if I match those up you can see the wood through there because that B notch is just a bit shallower. Okay, so what you're going to want to do then is separate all of these different piles or different slat pieces into those two different piles, B's and A's. The last piece you will find in here, if I can hurry and find one, is this piece here. It's got the same size notch as an A piece, but it is a bit thicker. You'll see in comparison there. It has about three millimeters more width than the A, and this is a C. There should only be four or five, depending on if we sent you an extra, just in case. Um, but there should be just a hand, just four or five of them. So separate everything out into your different piles. Okay, so after you've separated everything out into the different piles, you'll be able to see that here in this particular set there is five C's. For all the extra pieces you may have in your inserts, those are just in case something happens, they break. That way we don't have to ship you a whole nother one, adding a lot of shipping expense. It's easier just to send you extras um, beforehand. So you can actually pick, see this one has kind of an, a ding in the wood, so that's the one I'm not going to use. And I have four good ones here. Just discard any extras if they are available in your particular shipment. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick up this piece. Now it's important to notice that you have a wider end here than here. You can see these slats in this piece come all the way up into the end. This one there's about a five millimeter gap on the edge there. 
what we're going to do is we are going to start putting the wide end away from us. You're going to take a C piece and slide it right there in the end. Just the one C right in that wide end piece. You're then going to take a nice handful of A's and just start putting them parallel to that C piece. And this should, if my memory serves me right, there should be 10 A's per uh, tray. Okay. Now you'll take your B's and you'll put them perpendicular to the A's. And they should slide all the way down, fitting nice and snug, both to this, in this case a C, and the top of that A. And you'll just slide those down. And don't forget this very last slat right here on the end. It's going to require that 11th B piece. And there you have it. Now that we've got the easy part out of the way, here's a quick trick. Take a nice, you know, about 12, 15 inch piece of tape and put it right across the very center and through the top of this tray. This will just help everything not fall out as you're working with it from here on out. So the next thing we're going to do is one, remember that we've taken and we've put this wide piece of this center post away from us. Because when we put these pieces on, these side pieces, we're going to want to make sure we put the wide piece of these also on that same end. You may laugh at how silly that is to say, but believe me, when you've built a lot of these, you will mess that up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to glue this piece. The key is though, make sure that you are lining it up before you glue. It's very easy to glue the wrong side of this piece. On the first one, it's not a big problem because then you can just put it on the other side. But match it up, find which side you like best, finish wise. Make sure that points out. I like this side a little better, so I'll make it point out. And we're going to glue it right there. Okay, wide end, wide end, matching those up, so we're good to go. So I'm going to take and I'm going to glue. I'm going to glue at the top of that notch and beneath it. And now I'm just going to put a dot in between where these two uh, holes align on the top and the bottom all the way across this piece. What we're now going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to sit it straight up. Okay, well actually I put it a little bit at an angle here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But I'll hold it and now I'm going to take, and this is the tricky part, this is where you have to be a little bit patient um, but also just do as I say and it shouldn't be too hard for you. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to start by placing this first, the C post or tab in that hole there. Okay, you're going to put your finger there and you're going to then just start lining up each of these tabs in turn, slightly pushing down. Okay, and you're going to just start keep working your way up, keeping constant pressure down here and you're going to work it up just like you're zipping a zipper. Starting at the bottom, working your way up. As you start going, adding a little bit of pressure as you go, you will find that the reason you can't push down all the way is you have tabs further up that are getting in the way. So you just then need to line them up as you go. If you feel like, hey, this isn't working, look up or down the line to find out which tab is sticking and is not lined up with its hole. So you'll just slowly work your way up the tray, lining them up as you go. I'll try and shift here so you have a better view. Okay, I'm pushing. I'm seeing hey, this next post, it's not lined up. I can feel it. It's tight because I'm pushing down on it. So I'm going to pop it over, and there you have it. The whole thing just slid down a little bit more. 
and I'll just zip my way up this post okay every once in a while see I thought that was in and it's not so I just got to come back tweak it a little bit there we go did you hear it pop down excellent this isn't too tricky but it does require patience so there you have it it's all on and we're good to go I'll set it back down grab my other side piece match it up the angles are all the right side you can see I've got a kind of this tab it faces down okay get some more glue towards the end I'm gonna recheck it and now once again I'll glue in the same spots I did that other one and if it has a little web of glue that kind of uh, expands over the hole that's fine don't worry about it flip it now back up we're gonna do the same thing again remember my wide end wide end wide end I will then do the first one on that C tab and then just zip it on down lining everything up as I go keeping constant pressure on the part away from me that starting point because if you let that pressure up those will all pop off and you'll have to start over the constant pressure is key and there you have it and there's our first tray now here's the thing you see I don't know if the camera will capture this but I have it a little bit off kilter so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this piece I'm going to flip it upside down okay I'm going to take the tape off because I no longer need that tape and I am going to set it right on top of the lid the reason I'm doing this like I said earlier is because I want to use the squareness of the lid as a guide to help square out this tray notice I have not put on the end pieces yet I'm gonna flip it up I'm going to make sure it's nice and snug against the tops of the tray, pushing in, and then I'm going to tape it. I'm just using the tape I used to support it through the center here. Reuse the tape. And I'm going to tape this to the lid. <laughs> there you have it. Everything's lined up nice. I think we're good to go. I'm now going to then take these end pieces and either way works just fine either side just pick the side you like the best and make sure it goes outside I like this side I'm gonna make it poke out I'm going to then glue the top and the bottom of this center hole and each tab I'll then line it up with the lid so that means the tabs are headed up which is opposite just so you know from the the side pieces those the tabs are down okay I'm gonna line it up I'm going to work it in it'll snap into place I will wipe off any excess glue that came out I'll again take tape this to the lid and you see why I didn't I wanted to make sure I didn't tape the bottom piece of the lid because then this wouldn't match up nice I'd have tape in the way I'm then gonna tape the corners making sure again I make pull everything tight and pull it across repeat on this piece <laughs> a 
lining it up with that center post again. If you have to, you can rock it in. So rock back and then forward. That'll help line it all up. Perfect. Wipe away any excess glue. And again, tape the corners. You don't need a ton of tape. Tape the center, and now you know you have a squared up dice tray. That looks nice. To finish the rest, you'll just repeat the same process. After you're all done, and you've done your other three trays, you'll end up having something that looks like that. All taped up, all nice and tight. Take off all the tape. Be careful, make sure you pop these apart because sometimes the glue will seep and start se making or sealing your dice towers together there. Thankfully you don't ever have enough glue, so don't over glue, but you won't have enough that will cause you any problems. You'll just pop those joints apart, those bonds, and you'll have your trays. Just so you know, you see this hole here? It will match up when you fill it full of dice these trays will uh, flip back and forth that way the dice all lock together so this bottom tray would be like that if this was for example another tray it would then attach just like that okay with this wide side being on the opposite side and then the next tray so on and so forth thank you so much if you have any questions feel free to email me um, at info at DaedalusProductionsInc.com and remember Daedalus is spelled with an A first D-A-E-D-A-L-U-S thank you so very much and hope you enjoy your case for whether that's Quarriors or a Dice Master product we hope you enjoy it and have fun gaming thank you, bye bye